In the previous video, we learned about the theory behind rho vibrational spectroscopy. Now we'll actually perform the experiment. HCl and DCl are found in the gas phase when they are pure. Therefore, we'll use a gas manifold system to prepare our samples. Before entering the lab, remember, there are some specific safety hazards. HCl is corrosive. Avoid exposure to HCl. Gas manifold systems handle gas under pressure. Goggles must be worn at all times when preparing and working with samples. The gas manifold system will probably be new to most students, so let's go through a few of the main parts and talk about how to use a gas manifold. Our manifold is a large glass tube with many specialized fittings for gas tight seals. Our manifold has three ports, but other manifolds have many more ports. There are several other connections made to our manifold. We'll talk about these in a little while. The most important part of any manifold system is the valves. The port valves are shown here. Valves can be open or closed in order to access or isolate different areas, cells, or samples that are attached. In our manifold, these valves are made of Teflon and seal by tightening in a clockwise fashion. By turning counterclockwise, you open the valve. When opening or closing a valve, make sure to hold onto the valve housing with one hand and turn the valve with your other hand. This makes it less likely to apply a torque that could break the fragile port. In most manifold systems, there will often be more valves than you will actually need to use. A vacuum pump is used to evacuate the manifold system or any components connected to the manifold. The vacuum pump is not seen here. It's actually in the cabinet below the hood. The pump is connected to the manifold by a large red tubing on the left side of the manifold. The manifold can be put under vacuum by opening the vertical valve on the left. When you open this valve, anything that's in the manifold will be evacuated by the vacuum pump. Many samples, including HCl, can do damage to a vacuum pump, so you need to trap these molecules before they reach the pump. This is accomplished using a cold trap. The trap will be cooled with liquid nitrogen in our experiment, however there are many other cold trap baths that can be used. With a cold trap, gas phase molecules can be trapped and disposed of at a later time. The HCl-DCl sample will be transferred from the sample source to a sample cell that you can use in our spectrometer. Our sample cell has two ports, each with a valve. You will only use one port. The windows on either side of the cell are made of sodium chloride. Do not touch these windows. Our gaseous HCl and DCl sample comes in a small gas cylinder. We have the tank connected to our middle port of the manifold. The sample cylinder, also called the lecture bottle, has a main valve, which is blue in this case, and a needle valve, which is black. Needle valves allow for precise control of a valve so that it can be opened slowly. This is useful when trying to control the flow of a gas. We need to know how much of our sample is actually in the sample cell. Since gases expand to fill their container, volume is not a good measure. Instead, you will measure the pressure of the cell, which can be related to the number of molecules in our volume. You'll monitor the pressure using this gauge, which has units of tor. Let's start our experiment. Whenever you work on a gas manifold system, you're working with vacuum and pressure. If a component in our system were to fail, glass and chemicals can be forcibly expelled. For this reason, goggles are required when working with the manifold. You should also wear gloves for this experiment. First, obtain the sample cell from the instructor and attach it to the manifold. Make sure not to touch the windows. The ball on the sample cell fits into the socket on the port and is held together with a clamp. Make sure to stabilize the cell with the platform. Next, install the cold trap. There is a large O-ring that is used to seal the trap. Use the large clamp to keep the trap in position. Turn on the vacuum pump using the switch located below the hood. You'll hear a gurgling noise as the pump works against high pressure, in this case atmospheric pressure. The noise will quiet as the pressure in the system decreases. Open the valve to the vacuum pump. This is the vertical valve on the left side of the manifold. Opening this valve will evacuate the manifold and any sections that are open to the manifold. Open both valves leading to the cell and the port valve to the lecture bottle.
At this point, the valves shown here should be open. The rest should be closed. When the system comes to equilibrium, the pressure should be fairly constant and less than 30 torr. At this point, your cell has been evacuated and will serve as a good background for the sample. Close both valves for the sample cell. With the cell valves closed, you can remove the cell from the manifold without breaking vacuum in the manifold while simultaneously maintaining vacuum conditions in the sample cell. Gently rock the sample cell toward you to break the seal and remove the cell from the manifold system. Do not pull down on the cell. You are now ready to acquire a background FTIR spectrum. Carefully take the sample cell to the spectrometer. Slide the sample cell into the holder and close the lid on the spectrometer. Then follow the instructions in your handout to set up the background acquisition. After you have acquired a background, carefully take the sample cell out of the FTR and go back to the manifold. Attach the sample cell to the manifold, again making sure that the cell is stabilized. Open both valves leading to the cell. The pump will most likely get noisy as it has to pump out the atmosphere that was between the two valves. Ensure the main valve to the lecture bottle is closed. After ensuring the manifold valve is open, you can open the needle valve to the lecture bottle. The pressure should fall to less than 30 torr. Next, close the valve to the cold trap. With the sample cell and manifold under vacuum, you are now ready to fill your sample cell with the HCl-DCl mixture. The pressure in the lecture bottle is much higher than what you want in your cell, so you do not want to open the lecture bottle directly to the sample cell. You will first fill the small section between the lecture bottle and the needle valve. You will then slowly open the small volume to the full manifold. To do this, First close the needle valve to the lecture bottle. Open the main valve on the lecture bottle one turn and then completely close it. This will fill the small section of tubing with our sample. Slowly open the needle valve and wait for the pressure to reach 190 torr. Sometimes you do not have enough pressure from one filling of the tube and you will repeat the filling of the tube a second time. Once you have reached the correct pressure, close the needle valve and the sample cell valve. Do not close the port valve to the cell just yet. Next, fill the Dewar flask with liquid nitrogen. Be aware, liquid nitrogen is a cryogenic liquid that boils at negative 196 degrees Celsius. Liquid nitrogen can cause severe freezer burns if it comes in contact with your skin. Place the Dewar around the trap. Never install a Dewar containing liquid nitrogen until the oxygen has been pumped out of the system, as this can create an explosion hazard. Open the cold trap valve to remove HCl from the manifold system. Let the pressure fall to a constant pressure. Next, close the sample manifold valve in order to disconnect the sample cell. Then, Gently rock the sample cell toward you to break the seal and remove the sample cell from the manifold. You are now ready to acquire a sample FTIR spectrum. Follow the handout for details on setting up your acquisition. After completing your acquisition, see your instructor for details on how to empty the sample. Now, before you come into the lab to perform your experiment, take a minute to answer the following questions as part of your pre-lab. These questions can also be found in your experimental handout. This laboratory experiment will allow the observation of both the fundamental and first overtone bands of HCl and DCl. Explain what is meant by fundamental and overtone bands. Which band do you predict to be more intense? Think about the fundamental IR frequencies of HCl and DCl. Predict which molecule will have the higher frequency and support your prediction with an equation. Why do we use a cold trap on a gas manifold system? Mm -hmm.